Well, it's been a quiet week in Night Vale, my hometown out here on the edge of the desert. The weather's been cold for February, not quite cold enough to be newsworthy, and honestly, that's made everyone in town a little bit irritable. You see, there's really only two types of winter that make folk happy. The first type is holiday winter, the sort of winter you get early on in the season, the sort that comes with decorative snow, just enough to dust everything lightly so that it looks like the town's been covered in icing. The other kind of winter people enjoy is the black winter. It has to be cold enough so that you feel justified complaining about it to your neighbors. You see, we're self-reliant folk here in Night Vale, so complaining is sort of a luxury to us, and anything that lets us do that without feeling guilty, well, you know, it's quite a gift. Unfortunately, the cold snap that just moved through was barely worth mentioning at all. The killing wind that tore through town in the dark hours of night, shattering cats and stray nuns like fragile glass, it didn't even last until dawn. What's that? Oh, our intern Amanda there says that Steve Carlsberg wrote on his blog today that the fact that we've gone for three years running without a proper killing wind or methane rain is because of global warning. Steve, that's exactly the sort of talk I'd expect from someone who was recently seen looking at used cars in desert bluffs. Citizens, I ask you, what sort of man goes to desert bluffs to buy a car? Don't we have two perfectly good dealerships right here in Night Vale? What sort of man refuses to support local business? Steve Carlsberg, that's who. Who asked you to write a blog anyway, Steve? Just shut up. Everyone knows it's global warming. Everyone. But like I already mentioned today, we're proud people here. We're not the sort to whine and mope about it. Nobody likes a whiner, Steve. Nobody. Janice Rio from down the street found a way around this problem at the sidetrack tap earlier this week, complaining about the fact that the weather these days wasn't bad enough to complain about. How is the next generation going to grow up with proper American values if they've never had to wake up in the early hours before dawn to chop wood and chip frozen methane from their bloodstone circles before school? And the truth is, she probably has a point. Florian and Myrtle Krebsbach are back from their vacation, or at least we assume they're back. The Council of Elders issued a press release saying that they were back, and also postcards were nailed to the doors of all known family members, showing cheerful pictures of glowing iron brands that glittered eerily under fluorescent light. The cards, which pulsed and mewed pleasantly when held, clearly stated, we are back from our vacation. And if that doesn't make things pretty clear, well, then I don't know what will. In the community calendar, Our Lady of Perpetual Responsibility is hosting their annual spaghetti dinner and bingo night. It's all you can eat, $10 for adults, kids and seniors half price. All proceeds will be encased in lead and cast into the nameless void. Tempers were heated last night at the PTA meeting over the senior winter formal. Dozens of parents arrived to protest the student council's decision to break with tradition and change the theme from apostasy and fire to a night of ashes underneath a blood red moon. Debate lasted for more than two hours until chairman of the board Clarence Bunsen pointed out that kids would be kids and then emitted a high pitched keening that rendered everyone present incapable of swallowing or remembered the name or remembering the names of those that they once loved and now the weather <sighs> okay <laughs> <laughs>